Hey everyone, it's Kerry. Uh, I just wanted to jump on uh, because I wanted everyone to know I just gave a webinar on uh, dating for those on the autism spectrum. I think it went really well. I was really happy with it. And um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's very interesting. I, I did this because I, I was getting ready for Valentine's Day, uh, which is on Sunday. And I thought this would be a great tie-in for everyone. And one of the thoughts that came up um, d during the webinar was this whole topic of empathy. And I guess this has been just such a huge misconception within our autism community for so, so long. Some people think that all autistic people don't have empathy for others, which couldn't be farther from the truth. I would consider myself one of the more empathetic people I've ever met. And I feel like that's a misconception that can be very, very damaging, especially for those who are trying to navigate relationships for the first time and dating for the first time. But I was really, really happy with how the webinar went. And I've given over 15 webinars based on my journey from nonverbal autism to today being an autistic professional speaker. And uh, this is one of the topics I really love talking about the most because I would say that you know, 90, 95% of the time, my uh, people in my life don't want to talk about the, my, my mentees don't want to talk about the post-secondary opportunities. They don't want to talk about the mock interviews. They want to talk about the cute boy and the cute girl. And I was exactly the same way when I was their age. So I just wanted to jump on really quickly uh, because the webinar went so well and I felt like, yeah, let's just keep talking for a little while longer and see if anyone else has any thoughts or comments based on this really, really important topic within our community. Uh, so I have a few people uh, who have already written in. Uh, Kenny says, hi. Katie says, hi, Carrie. I have I'm a 29 and I have autism and sensory processing disorder and anxiety and depression. I started sensory shopping here in Canada. Awesome, Katie, that's really great to hear. Hey, Shauna, it's nice to hear from you too. Uh, Shauna, wh where was I a guest speaker? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious, anyways. But yeah, I, I had a great time on the webinar uh, and it was great because there were also several autistic self-advocates who were talking about them selves gain into relationships for the first time. So that was really, really cool. Um, and and I, I honestly think a lot of times I wish there was more resources on autism and relationships. I wrote a book, which we talked a little bit about tonight during the presentation called Autism and Falling in Love to the one that got away. And I wrote this book uh, after 10 years of trying to find love on the autism spectrum. Oh, at the College of uh, T. St. Jane, that's awesome. Uh, I wrote this book uh, based on over 10 years of trying to find love on the autism spectrum. And I thought to myself, so many of my mentees are craving knowledge about autism and dating. So I wrote down all my journal entries and I decided to write a book uh, based on that. To, and it became an Amazon bestseller within three days. And it's still up on Amazon. And uh, I've given it to so many of my mentees to help them navigate dating for the first time. Uh, and I also talk in the book about autism and empathy because it's such a big, big misconception. I, I understand that some individuals, it might be hard for them to really practice empathy and, and to be empathetic, but I think as as a, as a larger conversation, we need to understand that not all neurotypical people are empathetic. It's not like autistic people are the ones that are not empathetic. There are individuals within our community who don't have a disability who also aren't really that empathetic. So let's just have more and more understandings of the spectrum of autism as a whole but then also the spectrum of our human race as a whole as well. Uh, oh goodness, uh, Lindsay writes, uh, my five-year-old daughter has empathy and she shows a lot of empathy. Lindsay, that's awesome. Uh, Crystal writes, my 14-year-old son is autistic and he's the most caring person I know. Uh, yes, it, 
Ainsley writes, "Hey, Carrie, dating is a struggle." Yeah, Ainsley, Ainsley, I, I, I feel you there. The dating can be very hard, especially during COVID times. I'm actually curious if there are any uh, actually autistic self advocates on tonight who have been trying to date during this crazy time we live in during COVID nineteen. I feel like it's such a struggle for so many people before COVID, and now trying to. Has anyone tried the virtual dating? Oh my goodness, it is so odd. It's so, so odd. Uh, and just like the, also the times w when you're on a virtual date and there's like lag time. So you're literally just there and you, you, you hear them, but you can't see them on the screen. I don't know if this is happening to anyone or it's just me. Uh, but uh, yeah, so dating can be tough, especially during COVID-19. Uh, Rosa writes, my son is loving, especially towards children. Uh, Shauna writes, also the cool thing about having autism is that we have great memory. Yes, Shauna, sometimes I have very bad long-term memory. Uh, <laughs> based on my key interests, I have good memory. I, growing up could tell you all 30 NBA teams and then every single player on one of those teams. So when I have a laser key focus on a certain interest, yes, all the, all the time, but other times not so much. So I definitely can't recommend that uh, to everyone. Uh, Brian writes, thank you, it's a struggle, but it can bring hope. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for everyone watching this, I, I just wanted to also let you know in the description you're going to see a link that says bit.ly slash question for Carrie. If you click that link, uh, I am just about to post tonight's webinar. So I, I record all my webinars and I post them on my website. So anyone in our autism community can take advantage of learning a little bit more about my journey from nonverbal autism to today being autistic pro professional speaker. So on my website, I've talked about uh, toilet training. I've talked about navigating early intervention, social skills, and tonight dating on the autism spectrum. So if anyone wants to check that out, it's just bit.ly slash question for Carrie. It should be clickable within the description of this Facebook post. So definitely check it out. I'll leave your name and email and I'd be more than happy to help give the link uh, to any of you who might want to learn about a new topic. But yes, I can't tell you how many people still think of so many misconceptions. I'm curious for people who are watching at home, what are also other misconceptions that you truly, truly hate within our autism community? I would love to hear your perspectives as well. Uh, Brian writes, thank you is a struggle. Good. Yeah. Uh, Katie writes, hey, I love to learn how to play drums. Can you read music? Katie, yes, I can read a little bit of music. I was a really, really good, uh, a decent piano player when I was a kid. Music therapy was something that helped me tremendously growing up on the autism spectrum. So I highly, highly recommend music as a tool that can help a lot of kids with autism and also adults too. And then theater therapy, oh my goodness. Theater therapy was so helpful. Uh, I had mind blindness as a kid, not being able to understand other people's perspectives. So being able to do th theater therapy uh, and play different roles and play different characters was so life changing for me. Um, but yeah, and uh, I, I, I see a lot of people writing about music and it, it helped ha having that help them. Uh, Ag Agnes writes, hello, Carrie, my son loves to take care of elderly and the disabled. He's now in his second year in college taking, oh, awesome. Agnes, is your son on the autism spectrum? Because uh, we have a scholarship. We've given out via my nonprofit 86 scholarships for students with autism to go to college. So um, if your son is interested and needs scholarship aid, uh, I'll include a link in the comments of tonight's Facebook Live. So yeah, so I think the webinar went really, really well tonight. I, I, was, I was really happy with how it went. And um, I, I have a, a lineup of speaking engagements coming up in March and April, which I'm really excited about as well. Uh, April is also World Autism Month. So this is a month where we truly see so many events. I have a few schools I'm speaking at. 
I have a library that I'm hoping to speak at as well, um, talking about self-advocacy, talking about relationships. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but honestly, I am just excited about getting back to a new normal as well. I know so many of you uh, who are commenting who also joined us for the Facebook Live on Monday uh, with the autistic firefighter. That was so amazing. Chris had such an amazing, amazing story. So that was great to say. Uh, Brandy writes, hi, Carrie, what are your views on stimming? Yeah, Brandy, I I say that my views on stimming are, are like this. I feel like stimming, as long as it's not self injurious and it's not injuring somebody else, it's okay. I, I feel like stimming so many times we, we see it as a negative when some some individuals in our community have a lot of energy and they need a way to express that energy. Uh, growing up with sensory challenges, I would stim by rubbing my hands together. So that would be the way that I would stim um, because I, 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 I sometimes did like spirit fingers, I would say, <laughs> but uh, that, that was definitely a challenge growing up. And I worked with an OT to help with some of the stimming, but I feel like there's a negative connotation around stimming sometimes in our community and it can be very, very dangerous. Uh, yeah. My son, Ryan, who is 17, is extremely empathetic, way more than his neurotypical brother. Uh, sorry, brother. Uh, <laughs> Oh goodness, Barbara! I I would be curious. Um, is your son currently dating, or is is trying to navigate dating? Uh, that's a that's a topic that we we discussed today in our webinar, and that was just really really uh, cool to see. Oh, this is a great question. Hi, yes, Sienna. So what are your views on cannabis oil? I have a four-year-old nonverbal son. Yes, Sienna, you're actually in luck. We are giving a webinar on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on medical cannabis for autism, where we'll talk a little bit about who uh, would really capitalize on it and just discussing a little bit about if it's available in your state. So uh, I'll also include a link to that so you could sign up uh, even if you can't attend at that specific time, uh, every single person who RSVPs will receive um, a recording for them to watch at their leisure. So definitely check that out. Katie writes them on cannabis and it helps. Yeah, Katie, I would love for you to join the webinar as well next week. And uh, maybe you could share a little bit about your uh, perspective as well. Oh, Christina writes, oh, amazing question, very intrigued. Yeah, Christina, I would also encourage you to join us for the workshop. Even if you can't attend, uh, it will give you the opportunity to uh, just learn a little bit more from some of the leading experts in the field on the topic. Yeah, Meg, I, hey, Meg, oh, I love seeing familiar people in the comments. We have like a hundred people online. I, I really appreciate when I see people I know. Meg, good to see you. Hope you've been having a, having a good time with all this craziness going on in the world. Uh, we have a few people writing in. Uh, Terry writes, my husband won't accept my son could be on the autism spectrum, but that was because he was also on it. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. Yeah. I acceptance is really important. We talk so much about autism, understand it. Well, we talk about autism awareness. And as much as autism awareness is great for the kind of the first step, we need to get to autism acceptance, understanding and appreciation. Yes, Meg, let's definitely catch up soon. Glass of wine, virtual Zoom. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Uh, Crystal writes, my husband doesn't understand autism either. We have had so many talks on subjects such as stimming and him not understanding why our son uh, does jumps and down and flaps his hands around. Yeah, Crystal, I would definitely recommend uh, jumping on one of my webinars and having him jump on one of the webinars as well to learn a little bit more about autism. 
Uh, we've talked a little bit about everything. We've talked about sensory challenges, toilet training, eating challenges, sleep challenges. So uh, yes, Santa, the webinar is February 16th at 7 p.m. Uh, actually, as we speak, I'm picking up the link, which I'll include in the comments uh, for you to check out. Um, this is actually one of the most popular questions I get. It's about medical cannabis. So I really hope I can uh, help provide uh, a little bit more information for our community on that. So uh, the link will be up in one quick second. If anyone has any questions for me, feel free to uh, post them in the chat and we'll try to get to a few of them as well. Uh, as we're just talking about this whole misconception, which is so annoying in our community. Um, yes, okay. So yes, Anna, I just posted the medical cannabis link. So check that out. Uh, if you, e even if you, you can't make it again, the recording will be available. Trina Ritz, Trina, it's also a familiar, familiar name uh, that I know. Uh, Carrie, I think exploring trauma as it relates to being autistic and navigating a neurotypical world would be an interesting discussion. Yeah, I also think that, Trina. That's actually a great webinar idea. For, for, for anyone uh, who's just needing a specific topic uh, that they would like me to cover for an, a, 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 the next webinar, please let me know. I, I would definitely love some suggestions on topics that you would like to hear me talk about. Uh, Christina writes, I definitely need help with my son in toilet training. He is five and nonverbal. He's terrified of the potty. We've tried everything under the sun. Christina, you're not alone. Let me just tell you that right now. There's so many families just like you. We had, when we did the webinar, which I'll put a link to in the comments so you could check it out. Um, there was 51 families and all of them were ranging from my son hasn't touched the potty yet to my son has touched the potty, but is fecal smearing and having other challenges. And it, it was a very wide spectrum of challenges, but uh, it was really powerful hearing so many people's comments uh, and just sharing their stories because uh, it, it, it was just great to have that village. <laughs> Julia, yeah. Uh, Nancy writes, hi, my name is Thomas. I'm 16 years old and I have autism. Awesome. Thomas, what brings you on to the chat tonight? Yeah, Ju Julie writes, what's your stance on Autism Speaks in their platform? I haven't worked in Autism Speaks for three years now, three and a half years now. I'm on the panel of advisors for the Autism Society, the board of directors for the National Autism Association, uh, also a board member for IBCCS, a advisory member for Autism on the Seas, and also a newly appointed advisory member for ELS for Autism. I was actually responding to someone the other day who still thought I worked at Autism Speaks, and I was just like, come on, it's been like, three years now. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Terry writes, welcome, Thomas. And sometimes being a public speaker, I people just, most people still think I work at Autism Speaks, which isn't true. Uh, other people, you know, uh, other people still say that I can't have autism because I can speak. Uh, Others say that I can't be autistic because I have empathy. So it's a very, very long list of misconceptions that people, people, one person looked at a WebMD article and said that I don't show any of the signs of autism. Uh, another person uh, mentioned that, um, how was I able to recover myself of my autism? You know, the, the, the list goes on and on. Oh, Meg, yeah, I, I just joined uh, a year and a half ago. I don't know if you know Wendy personally, but I absolutely love, 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 love Wendy. Wendy and Lori, co-founders. Alyssa writes, my girl's doing well. 
finally at home, nine years old, doing toileting on her own. Oh, that's awesome. Anyone homeschool? That's that's a real uh, Christina. I I would recommend checking out the Facebook group Autism and Homeschooling. I'm part of it. I post some of my videos on there. Um, it might be a, a good group. I always say you have to take Facebook groups with a grain of salt because some of them can be very very catty in nature. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, because so many of you are commenting about the toilet training, I'm going to grab the link uh, right now and post that in the comments as well. Does anyone have a teenager or a young adult who's having challenges with dating right now? Because I was just so fascinated. I, I always love when I give a webinar and there's not only parents, but there's also educators. We had an educator who was part of an autism support group which was really great to say. I loved getting the perspective from, from all ends, uh, not only getting that first person perspective, but getting the perspectives of people who actually work day in and day out, uh, trying to help individuals transition uh, into dating for the first time. So for everyone who mentioned toilet training, I just included the link. It's just gonna say masterclass toilet training for autistic children. Uh, definitely check it out if, if you have time. Um, one of my favorite webinars and one of the most watched uh, webinars simply because the, the importance of the topic. Oh my goodness, Christina, I agree. When others try to compare their autistic child and mine, I get so ag ag aggravated. They are not the same. Uh, I, I, I would definitely check out my website. Uh, I, I wrote a blog based on a quote that uh, Advocate did, Stuart Duncan. Stuart Duncan wrote, autism is one word trying to describe millions of stories. And I absolutely love that because it's so true. It's, it's obviously a spectrum, but I can't speak for everyone who's on the autism spectrum because I know there's a large spectrum of people who are nonverbal. I know there are a large spectrum of people who are going to live in a group home when they get older. And I can't speak for everyone, but what I hope is I can advocate for everyone. I can advocate to make sure that every single person on the autism spectrum is getting reliable resources to help them across the lifespan. Terry writes, my son, I love this. My son 30 has autism past, wow, just so much. I would love my son to date. He's a lovely young man, but with so many beautiful attributes, he has decided not to date, unfortunately. Yeah, Terry, for people watching it at, at home, I would love to hear if you know of this name, uh, and some of you probably do. Dr. Temple Grandin. Dr. Temple Grandin, who herself is on the autism spectrum, discusses that she really never wants to be in a relationship. Her, her love of her life is her work. And I, I love her perspective because we need for people to understand that we can't pressure somebody into getting married, getting into a relationship some people are going to want that and others aren't and that's okay every everything spectrum right hence the word spectrum yes agreed 100 percent uh but anyways i just wanted to come on for a few minutes just tell you all about the webinar that went amazing um if you fill out the link just this link right here, which I'll also include in the comments. Just bit.ly question for Carrie. I will make sure that you get the uh, link so you can check out the recording of that. Uh, I, I was just blown away by some of the, the thoughts and questions that that, that came in. Uh, it, it, it was truly, truly great to see. 
so, so many people just engaged and involved in, in, in just a very healthy conversation. Because again, it's like employment. We hear so much about empl employment, even though the majority of those with autism are unemployed or underemployed. But if, if, if you ask me what resources were currently available for those on the autism spectrum who would want to learn more about relationships, I mean, Tony Atwood wrote a book, Stephen Shore talks a lot about sexuality, Amy Graffino, uh, who's a, a uh, autistic female, talks a lot about autism and sexuality. These are incredible recommendations, but I don't see enough of it. Uh, one of the things that we were talking a little bit about tonight was Love on the Spectrum. I don't know if anyone has watched Love on the Spectrum on Netflix, but uh, such a great show, such an insightful look into dating on the autism spectrum, both dating somebody who else is on the autism spectrum and then just neurotypical people as well. I will say that that's another big misconception that I truly hate. I hate when people say that autistic people can only date other autistic people. Full disclosure, I have never dated anyone who's on the autism spectrum. And that's not because I haven't had the opportunity to. It's, 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 it's actually, I haven't had the opportunity to. I don't know why I said it that way. I literally have never had an opportunity to date somebody else who was on the autism spectrum. It's just never happened before. Oh, Terry writes, I'm from Northern Ireland. I just took my dad for his 70th birthday to Ireland. And I'm named, my name is Kerry. So I was named after the reign of Kerry in Ireland. So sounds like you need a second opinion. But what? <laughs> I'm sorry, Terry, I might, I might miss that. You might be writing that to, to another uh, person in the comments. Uh, Meredith writes, Temple has a children's book. It makes my son cry. We loved books. And it's the best book for children I've ever read. Uh, Meredith, if you've had a chance to read my book over here, uh, it's called I Will Light Up Lou. It's a, it's a children's book that focuses on twins on the autism spectrum. One who, one who is nonverbal, who's a girl, and the other who is a boy who's on the autism spectrum who has sensory challenges. So it's a great introduction. It's available on Amazon if you want to check it out. Uh, highly recommend. I wrote it simply because I want more kids to understand a little bit more about the characteristics of other kids with autism. So they'll be more understanding. Sierra writes, yeah, I definitely need more light to autism dating so teens feel more comfortable and know it's normal. Yep, I agree, Sierra. Yeah, Sierra. Sierra, what you can do is if um, you follow the link, Family Autism Closet, was that my book that you read? I am very curious. Yeah, Sierra, what you can do is if you go to the link in the comments and you just leave your name and email, uh, I will send you the link uh, to the recording when it's live which should be tonight. It's just uploading to my website right now. So I'll, I'll uh, send you the link so you can uh, take advantage of that. In addition to anyone else, if you just go to the link, copy this link into your browser and leave your name and email and just let me know that I was on Carrie's Facebook Live tonight and I would like to check out this webinar or any other specific webinar that we talked about tonight, toilet training, non-verbal autism, sleep challenges, eating challenges, just leave a note in the form, just letting us know uh, which webinar you want to take advantage of. Uh, Katie writes, uh, would you have a free day where we could video chat and discuss autism? Yeah, Katie, I, I, I am right now trying to, I've had a very challenging year uh, with COVID-19, most of my speaking engagements have been uh, canceled and postponed. So I've been uh, really trying to find new ways of making my 
speaking career um, sustainable. So um, it's been a very, very hard challenge, which unfortunately it's left me the unfortunate opportunity to not have uh, volunteer time to really do a lot of things right now as I'm trying to keep not only this nonprofit sustainable, which is part of this Facebook page, but uh, just a lot of the other work that I'm doing. So hopefully in the future, Katie, let's definitely stay in touch and maybe in the future. Oh, everything Spectrum writes. I love this. What do you think of the show Atypical and is dating on the show if you saw it? Yes. So I can't tell you how much I love Atypical because it focuses on um, Sam Garner, who is an 18 year old man who's just starting uh, dating for the first time in college. And it, it, it's really one of the most authentic, even though the, the actor is not played by somebody who's autistic, it's one of the more authentic portrayals of autism, I believe, that we have uh, on any form of entertainment platform today, regardless if it's a film or a TV show. So I absolutely love it. Oh, I'm sorry, somebody asked what's, the, what's it called? Oh, Crystal, you asked what's it called? So. Uh, the book is called, I will, boom, Mike decide to slam into my laptop. Uh, the book is called, I will light up blue and it's available on Amazon. It's available on Amazon, but then it's also available on my website, carriemagra.com. Oh, Sierra has a very good question. Um, and I'm actually curious about this myself because I actually didn't know about this. Does anyone know why in some areas ABA therapists aren't allowed in schools? I didn't know that that was actually a thing. I thought most ABA therapists were allowed to go in the school systems. If anyone knows anything about that, I find that really curious. Yeah, everything spectrum. Uh, if you go to the link uh, in the comments, just bit dot lee slash question for Carrie. Just leave your name and email and uh, let me know which webinars that you want to take advantage of. Or if you just want an overall uh, webinar link, I could do that also. Michelle writes, my son has autism, find it hard with toilet training as there's nothing there and eat problems and he's seven, he's eight in April. Yeah, Michelle, um, Michelle, let me know if um, you want to take advantage of those webinars also. You just need to follow the link. It would be, um, I, I wrote the one w workshop I did on eating challenges is called when somebody says your child with autism will eat when they're hungry. And uh, I, I hate when people <laughs> say that because it won't happen. <laughs> it's like as an adult, sometimes I have to schedule in my calendar or I literally won't eat. I, I And it's not that I won't be hungry, it's just I won't forget. I'll, I'll just completely forget about that. Anyways, uh, do we have any other thoughts or questions? I just came on and just, I, I wanted to say hi to everyone and let you know how much fun the webinar was tonight. And um, I'm gonna have the recording up so if anyone else wants to take advantage of that. But empathy was one of the topics that we were talking about and just the misconception that's just driving our community crazy at times. And these misconceptions really do damage to our community. Oh, Sierra writes, so I teach in El Paso and they're not allowed. Oh, huh. I actually wanna do, Sierra, I wanna do a webinar on ABA therapy next after medical cannabis. So I definitely think I'm going to check that out because uh, that is a frequent question I get if I ever received any ABA therapy as a kid. And it just wasn't popular. I was diagnosed with autism in 1992. And this is like, I had occupational, I had speech, I had physical, I had music and I had theater therapy. And ABA therapy in my area, at least, I 
didn't start to hear about ABA therapy until like the mid nineties. So, um, I'm definitely going to check out doing a webinar on that because I have a lot of resources that I would like to share with all of you on that. Just out of curiosity, if somebody in the comments can just let me know if you'd be interested in a webinar on ABA therapy also. Be really curious to see if there's just a large community on my Facebook page as well. I, I know I keep getting comments from, from parents uh, but I, 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 I'm curious if the consensus from the people on Carrie's autism journey is that they would like to see a webinar on ABA therapy. Okay, so Lucinda is game. Awesome. So maybe what we'll do is the following week, uh, the week of February 22nd, I'll schedule a, a webinar on ABA. Yes, so this is a great question. So Maria, uh, one of the first webinars I did was on my sensory challenges because uh, sensory challenges was actually my biggest struggle uh, growing up. Uh, I had a hypersensitivity to all noises and lights. I would wear sunglasses in class because of the fluorescent lights. Um, and I was also a sensory seeker it just clicked one day. So uh, I have a webinar on that. So if you fill out the form at bit.ly slash question for Carrie, I'd be more than happy to send that to you. Oh, uh, Lucy, Washington birthday. Is Washington's birthday on the week of the 22nd? Oh, uh, Crystal writes, can we sign up for reminders so we don't miss it? Yeah, Crystal, what I suggest you do is you follow me on Instagram and also on Facebook. Uh, check out both of those because then I will be able to, I, I, I schedule tune-ins for all of my webinars. So definitely check that out. Yeah, Kim writes, we have so much time away from school. I hear you, I hear you on that. Maria, thank you. I'll be looking at the webinar. Yeah, Maria, just go to bit.ly slash question for Carrie, which is already in the comments of this Facebook, and uh, I'll get that to you. Joyce Joyce writes, I'd like to get an email. Yeah, Joyce, all you need to do is copy that link into your browser and then you will be good to go. All right, well, thank you all so much for just hearing me for a few minutes today on this crazy misconception I keep hearing about in the autism community. And I hope you have a great night and a really pleasant weekend. I'm based in New Jersey, so we're expecting a little bit snow this weekend. I don't know if anyone's just been hit by this crazy weather we've been having too, but anyways, have a great night all and uh, talk soon.